Hello everyone. AI is getting popular and advanced these days. And that is the reason now most of the organizations are adopting AI into their environment. If you're new to cloud, it's highly recommended that you first deploy a landing zone before you provision any resource. So in this video, I'm going to provide information regarding the Azure AI services landing zone, which is deployed over the enterprise scale landing zone. So let's start. First of all, what is landing zone? Landing zone is a pre-configured set of resources and configuration which sets up the foundation for your cloud workloads. So now if I'll talk specifically about Microsoft, so in Azure, they provide Azure landing zone. Another question is why the landing zone is so important? Because it provides the improved security. When you have pre-configured guardrails in place, in that case, it becomes more secure than you normally deploy the resources. You have the streamlined governance using the Azure policies as well as the role based access control. You have better governance of the resources. For example, users should not be allowed to create a public IP in the production environment. You can set up the Azure policy that none of the user can create a public IP in the production environment. Another reason is a better cloud adoption. The resources which run in the cloud are a little bit different than how you run the resources in on prem. So you have to utilize the cloud services so you get the better performance of your resources. With an enterprise scale landing zone, you can scale your resources to any limit because all these scalability are catered while deploying the landing zone. Landing zone is also better for the cost optimization and the reason is because you have guardrails and the governance in place and you know which resources can be deployed in your environment and which should not be. And by that way, you optimize the cost for your cloud resources. And finally, the centralized management. After deploying the landing zone, you have different subscription where you can set up the centralized monitoring and logging of the resources, centralized management of the role-based access control and other governance policies. So in short, we can say landing zone provides the foundation using which we can better manage our Azure resources. So now I'll provide information about the enterprise scale landing zone. I have already created a video on this topic whose link you can find in the description of this video. But for this video, I'll provide a quick overview. If you are in pay as you go or enterprise agreement with Microsoft, or you are a cloud service provider with any Microsoft partner, in that case, all the resources or the subscriptions which you deploy always go to the tenant root group, which is here. But now what we are doing in the enterprise scale landing zone or any landing zone, is that we deploy a management group structure. So here example is taken as Contoso, but based on your organization, you can provide the name. Now there are different management group. It's like a folder structure under which you deploy the different files or the different resources. Here it's a management group under which you deploy different subscriptions and then you deploy the resource group and the resources in those subscription. So on the left side is the platform management group. It's for infrastructure team, I would say, where there are three different sub management groups, identity, management, and connectivity. So if I'll talk about the connectivity, connectivity management group has connectivity subscription, which you can also call it as the hub subscription. Now in the connectivity subscription, you have the Azure firewall or any other firewall or the jump box, best and service, Azure DNS, as well as the connectivity with the on-prem environment or any other cloud provider. So this is your hub subscription and all the traffic will flow through this subscription. And this is a hub and spoke architecture. So all the other subscription will be the spoke subscription, which will be connected to the hub subscription and all the centralized networking resources will be part of this connectivity subscription. Then comes the management subscription. And in the management subscription, you have the log analytics workspace where you save the logs, where you have Azure monitor automation account from where you can run all the automation centrally to all the different subscriptions, as well as you provide different role assignments, policy assignments here. Now the third subscription is the identity subscription. If you have an hybrid environment and you have an on-prem active directory, in that case, you deploy the domain controllers in Azure so that you have better active directory management along with the DNS. If there are any recovery service vault or the Azure key vault, these are also defined in the identity subscription. 
So these three subscription, which comes under the platform management group are mostly managed by the infrastructure team. However, if we'll talk about the landing zone subscription, there are different management group you can create. And in the landing zone subscription are the production environment subscription, non-prod test. You can create multiple subscription based on the different environment you have. However, in this video, we are talking about the AI services subscription. So one of the subscription here is AI services subscription, which is under the landing zone. It's a spoke subscription and it has a VNet peering with the connectivity subscription. So all the layer three, layer four traffic will be flowing through the connectivity subscription. We'll discuss this in detail in the next slide. And there are other options of the sandbox subscription or the decommission subscription, which you can define here. However, the sandbox subscription is an isolated environment where you practice or test the different resources. And the sandbox environment is never connected with the hub subscription. And apart from this, you can define the Azure DevOps. And if in case you want to manage uh, the Azure hybrid worker, that will be deployed in the management subscription. So if you want to understand about enterprise scale landing zone, I have already created a video on this, but in this video, I'll focus on the Azure AI services landing zone. So now this is AI services landing zone. So basically first you deploy the enterprise scale landing zone. Once you have the, all the networking setup, all the role based access control and the monitoring setup done, then you deploy the AI services landing zone. So most of your AI applications are deployed in the app services. Now that can be a chatbot, that can be a web application. So most of the time those will be run on HTTPS. And now if the traffic is on layer seven, in that case, you need the web application firewall in instead of the Azure firewall, which serves the layer three and layer four traffic. Now you have, as you can see here, chat UX. So different app services instances are running. And if a user has to connect to these chat UI, in those cases, they have to go through application gateway and web application firewall. Now, if in case you want to connect to this subscription, you can use the best in service or the jump box. So that should also be deployed. And in case you don't want your app services to be connected from internet, you have some application which are running internally. So in that case, you want the private connectivity with the app services. However, app service is a public endpoint service. So by default, if you deploy an app services, it will have a public endpoint. But to make it private, you can disable the public endpoint and enable the private endpoints. And once you enable the private endpoint, a network interface card is created into your subnet and app services become the part of your network. So you have the private endpoints and the subnets deployed where the NSG will also be applied. And definitely the monitoring log analytics workspace or the diagnostic settings has to be applied. If you want to keep the logs in this subscription, otherwise you have a management subscription where all the logs should be saved. Now the app service has to connect with the different resources like another app service or storage account, key vault or Azure AI Foundry, which we'll discuss shortly. So all these services and all these past services should be connected through a private endpoint or app service integration subnet. So you create an app service subnet and all these resources are deployed in there. Now to deploy the different AI models and the services, now Azure is recommended to deploy Azure AI Foundry. In Azure AI Foundry, you deploy Azure AI Hub and then the different projects in it. When you deploy AI Hub, you deploy the Azure storage account as well as the key vault. Storage account for storing the data. If, if you're saving any data into your hub, in that case, all the data will be saved into the Azure storage account and the credential of that storage account will be saved into Azure Key Vault. When you create a project in the Azure AI Hub, then that project is connected with the different services like Azure AI Search Service, Azure Open AI Service, and there is a direct connectivity between them. And if you're deploying a containers, then you need an Azure Container Registry too. So all these services should be deployed but they should be deployed with a private endpoint so that they become either they have a direct connectivity or they become part of your network. These services should not be accessible from internet. And to make all this networking work, a virtual network has to be created and a user defined route has to be defined how the network will flow. Now we have discussed if the user is connecting using the layer seven, which is HTTPS layer, 
in that case you have application gateway or in case you have deployed multiple APIs then you should deploy API management also using which you can manage all the APIs going out of your Azure environment. If those app services has to be connected on the layer three or layer four, in that case, all the traffic should be flowing through Azure Firewall. That means the connectivity between spoke subscription, which is the AI landing zone subscription, as well as the connectivity subscription should be there. And all the DNS query, as well as the traffic will go through Azure Firewall or the Azure DNS. And once you are done with the networking and the deployment of the resources, the next thing which you do is deploy the Azure policies. Using the Azure policies, you can define the different guardrails or the governance, which resources should not be created. If someone is deploying the Azure OpenAI GPT models, which models should not be created. This is how you define the governance in your AI services landing zone. Now there are a lot of resources involved. So you don't want to provide access to everyone to the whole subscription and based on the different resource group or the different services, you should provide the role based access control here. And finally, two more things. One is the cost management, which becomes very easy if you have the proper tags in place. And if you have different services, which can be onboarded into the defender for cloud, it's highly recommended. Because Defender for Cloud will provide you suggestion if there is any security concern regarding your resources. And finally, the best part of using the landing zone in the management group structure is that if in case you want to create one more subscription for the AI services, you can just create a new subscription and add it under the same management group. And all the governance and the guardrails will be applied on the new subscription itself along with the role based access control. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.